what's up everybody and welcome back to another Layer by Layer. I'm Noah for Adafruit and today we're taking a look at using vector artwork to create very cool custom characters and shapes. So today we're taking a look at the Droney Awards contest. This is an upcoming contest to celebrate all cool things in drones and film and photography. So be on the lookout for that. This is Droney. This is our little mascot uh, for the award and this is a 3D printed trophy. So um, I used vector artwork from Bruce Yan, who's our creative director um, at Adafruit, uh, to make this very cool um, character, which is uh, a part of this trophy. So this a lucky uh, winner will, uh, will be awarded with this 3D printed and, and uh, metal filament, uh, bronze fill, um, um, for, for winning the contest. So this is a very cool thing. But today we're going to take a look at using uh, 123D to create um, that shape. So. This is the artwork here. Um, this, again, was created by Bruce Yan, our creative director at Adafruit. And this is a very, very cool little, um, very simple uh, to make, but actually very complicated to make um, since it's a very sort of smooth shape. So um, using this as, as reference for artwork was a little bit difficult. So what we had Bruce do is create um, a profile, a couple profiles of uh, the Droney character. So here we have the top view, we have the side view, and the front. And in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, making just the base of it. So we'll start off by selecting the path that we need. So this is the path right here. Um, we'll select it, and then we'll um, paste it into a new document. So it's just a single path. And then we'll save it out as an SVG. So I named it here uh, DroneFacePath.SVG. You want to make sure it's a 1.1 SVG when, uh, when importing it. And this is what it looks like. Um, and 1, 2, 3 is a final uh, design all merged in and um, manifold. Um, and this is sort of the shape that, we're, that we'll be making. And you'll notice that it's a very, uh, very curvy shape. Um, it's, there's very little straight lines in it. It's all a curve. And it's a pretty, um, pretty easy shape to, to make with a couple of features in 123D. So we'll go ahead and start with a new document. We'll come up here into import, uh, import SVG, and we'll import it as a sketch. Navigate to our little SVG, hit open, and you'll see that it is imported in like that. And the next thing we'll do is we'll hit Command-T with it selected, and that way we can move it around. And you'll notice that it's not exactly in the center of the grid, so we want to do that. So we'll go ahead and move it um, into place there, so that's in, in the middle of one of these grid lines. So that looks pretty good. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll come up here to sketch and create a polyline on the y-axis so that I can um, mess with the uh, Oops, that wasn't exactly in the center there. Let's try that again. The grid tends to disappear sometimes when you're working with it, but that's okay. So, okay, now we've created our line that's split down the middle, but if you notice, that didn't actually split the, uh, the solid, and that's because it's been imported as a sketch, so you really can't manipulate. If this was drawn inside of 123D, you could um, intersect the lines and split it that way, but it's not the case here. So what we'll do is we'll extrude it by five mil, which is a new solid. And then we can delete that sketch since we don't need it. And now what I'll do is I'll select the, uh, the shape and I'll come up here to modify. And then I'll hit split solid. With the solid um, selected, I'll click on split entity and then I'll select that Y um, sketch that we created. And then what that'll do is that'll help me uh, split this thing in the exact center. So now I have two halves. So I'll go ahead and delete one half. And the next thing I need to do is to project the sketch uh, so that I have the half sketch, not an actual uh, solid. So I'll come up here to the back, and I'll come up here to um, sketch, and then hit project. And then I'll select the bottom of the surface here, click on it twice to create it, and then hit OK. And now we have our sketch. So what I'll do is I'll delete that solid that we made, and now we have our sketch. So we have our half sketch here and our, um, our polyline sketch here that's coming across it. So what we'll do now, is we'll select that, highlight it, and then come up here and hit Revolve. So the Revolve tool is what's going to revolve around this, uh, this polyline to create that shape. So here's what I mean. So we'll come up here and click on Axis since the profile is already selected. And I'll select that polyline that we created. And you'll get presented with this little uh, rotation handler. So what happens when I start rotating is you'll see what Revolve does. It revolves the sketch around that polyline. So that is a really cool way to make these type of shapes. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and type in 360 because that's how much we want it to go around the whole thing. So hit enter. And now you'll notice that it's uh, been created a little bit uh, in the center of the grid. That's what we want. Not, that's not exactly what we want. So to get it um, flat down how we want is we'll select it and we'll hit X on your keyboard. And what that does is it, um, it shifts it uh, in increments of 45 degrees on the X. You could also hit Y and Z, but in this case, we just want to use the X. I'll hit X again. And now it's looking pretty much straight up. And then I can select it again and hit D on my keyboard to drop it onto the, can onto the, the grid. And the next thing you'll notice is, um, here, I'll go ahead and delete that sketch so you can see it. When I click on the, the new created shape and hit Command T, um, you notice it's not exactly in the center. And when we try to center it, it doesn't quite fit exactly in the center. It's not exact. And we want it to be exact. So what we'll do is we'll come up here and create a new primitive. And the primitive will snap to the grid and be in the exact center. So that's nice. So we'll just go ahead and click that. And now that it's in the exact center, we'll go ahead and move our, our little grum drop shape up. And then I'll click on Snap and then select the bottom surface and then the top surface of that primitive that's exactly in the center and that shifts it exactly in the center. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And then see now when you hit Command T, you'll see it's exactly in the center. So that's a cool little way to do that. And then I'll hit D on my keyboard to drop it down. Now the next thing I want to do is create that face detail where, a, where um, half of the face is being um, recessed inside to make that sort of, sort of a space helmet look. So what I'll do is I'll come up here to Primitive and select Sphere. It needs to be pretty big, so I'll put a radius of 100 and hit Enter to place it in there. And you'll see it's intersecting with it. And to see through it, I'm going to click uh, and change the material to clear so that I can see through it. And then I'll select the, uh, the sphere and then highlight it and then just move it, shift it a little bit out so it's not um, eating all of the face. So that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing I need to do is uh, make an... Um, make a sort of intersection of these. And instead of uh, duplicating these two objects and then subtracting from them, there's an actual easier way to do that. So what I'll do is I'll select the shape and I come up here to Modify and I click on Split Solid. Now I'll click on Split Entity since the body's already selected. And what I'll do is I'll select the, the two surfaces from the gumdrop. So like that, it selects it red. And then you'll see, um, you can kind of see through it. And watch what happens when I hit OK. We get it, both solids, but it's now split. So if I delete this part, you'll see which, uh, which part is intersected now. So that's pretty cool. And what we'll do is we can pull the face out when we select, when we ho hover over it, make sure it's the right one. We need to do both of them. And then I can pull it out by, four, uh, by eight millimeters. And now it is um, extruded out. But we want it to be recessed in. So what we'll do is we'll merge this two shapes together. And now that it's one shape, now I can uh, hit P on the keyboard and click on the faces uh, to, to, um, to bring it inward. So I'll bring it inward by 8 millimeters. Or a little bit more, maybe 14, yeah, to double that 8. And now we have a nice, very recessed um, looking sort of shield for the face. So now the last thing I'll do is I'll come up here and hit E on the keyboard and select that edge. And now we, can, now we can apply a fillet to it to give it a nice smooth um, little edge there. And that is how to create the little face for our droney mascot. So we used the Revolve tool, we used uh, Project Sketch, and then we used Split Solid to create this. So you can use this, um, you can use these three features uh, to create all sorts of different types of shape, shapes and sizes and, and characters and things. So it's pretty cool. Um, again, you definitely want to um, use uh, a vector program as it tends to have better pen tools and things like that. So if you're using Inkscape, it'll work the same way. You just have to export it out as an SVG. So that's pretty cool. Again, you want to be on the lookout for more details on the Adafruit's Droney Awards. Again, this is our little Droney trophy. So if you want to win this guy, Keep your eye out on the details uh, on how to enter and win the contest. Thank you guys for watching. And if you guys have any um, suggestions, I'm taking requests. And I'll probably put together 
um, some cool tutorials that are requested um, in the coming weeks. So be sure to let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, you can also let me know. I'm also on Twitter. I'm at Ekin. And thank you guys for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more 3D printed projects and tutorials from Adafruit. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you.